this is Colin O'Keefe here for LXBN TV. The Supreme Court agreed to take up an interesting case in Spokio v. Robbins. While the suit focuses on the Fair Credit Reporting Act, it could have far greater implications than just there. To explain, we bring in attorney Kristen McMillie. She's chair of Davis Wright Tremaine's privacy and data security practice and author on the firm's privacy and security law blog. Uh, Kristen, first off, for those who are unaware, you know, potentially just how big this case could be, can you walk us through the basics of the suit and what's at stake here? Sure, sure. So the basics, just, just as a reminder, as you mentioned, this is a Fair Credit Reporting Act case. It was initially filed as a class action in a district court in California, and the plaintiff, Robbins, alleged that the defendant, Spokio, had published certain information about Robbins that was... Um, inaccurate and that caused, um, had certain implications, negative implications for his employment prospect, future employment prospects. Um, as background, Spokio is an online company that aggregates data and from, from publicly available information sources. And when somebody goes to the uh, Spokio site or conducts an internet search, information will be displayed about that person when you do a search by that person's name. So in this case, the um, information that was displayed about Robbins by uh, the Spokio search results were um, the fact that he actually had more education uh, and um, more professional experience than he actually had, uh, that he was married when in reality he was not, and that um, he actually was in a better financial position than he was. So while these don't seem like terrible uh, pieces of misinformation, uh, allegedly it caused him distress. He thought it may affect certain employment opportunities that he had and um, that, it, that it was a, a violation of the Fair Credit Reporting Act statute, which is supposed to give consumers the opportunity to, one, consent to the sharing of this type of information for certain purposes, as well as give consumers the opportunity to correct the information when it's inaccurate. And the plaintiff, Robbins, alleged that Spokio was a consumer reporting agency subject to the Fair Credit Reporting Act, and that uh, by publishing these reports, it had violated the statute. Unfortunately, neither the issue of whether Spokio is in fact a consumer reporting agency or uh, whether or not the search results were consumer reports under the statute was addressed by the district court. Instead, uh, and what really makes this case so interesting is the court said there was no harm and therefore ultimately dismissed the case. The Ninth Circuit, however, reversed the district court holding, and it found that when Congress creates a statute that has a statutory right and there are statutory damages associated with it, a technical violation of the statute uh, in and of itself can create the required Article III standing. So Spokio has now taken this to the Supreme Court, and they are asking the court to resolve the question, is a technical harm of a statute enough to confer Article III standing, or does there have to be actual harm in order for plaintiffs to proceed? Um, the implications, as you can imagine, uh, in our current class action environment uh, could be huge. Absolutely. This is a, a very, very big case, of course, you know, especially nowadays where there's a lot of class actions in the privacy and data security realm, which is, of course, you know, why I'm speaking to you here today. Can you explain, you know, the potential impact with that issue? You know, what's the potential impact of the Supreme Court's ruling in the realm of, say, privacy and data security, uh, you know, depending on the ruling here? Sure. So there are so many statutes, as you mentioned, uh, that are within the realm of privacy and information security that um, both confer statutory private rights of action and have statutory damages. And um, the amounts that we're talking about, if we look at the Video Privacy Protection Act, for instance, um, which is supposed to prevent against the unauthorized disclosure of consumers viewing uh, information. So in that instance, it's a $2,500, no less than $2,500 per violation. You can imagine how quickly those damages will, will add up. If you look at um, today, the I, I believe it was the Second Circuit just came out with a ruling about the NSA's bulk um, collection activities, right? So if a provider uh, doesn't isn't able to claim immunity under the Electronic Communications Privacy Act, 
that also has a private right of action, and we're talking about a thousand dollars, no less than a thousand dollars. I have to say no less because this is, you know, these are the statutory damages. They they add up so quickly, and it can actually be more than that, but no less than a thousand dollars per uh, per individual. So imagine a case where you have. You know, if, if we're talking about a, a statute that, for instance, may have retention requirements and a company keeps the records longer than it's supposed to, but the records aren't disclosed to anybody, there's no actual harm to the plaintiff. It was a pure technical violation and maybe they were destroyed six months later. Now you're talking about, you know, let's say that that company has. I don't know, 10,000 customers, that's a relatively small company today. Uh, when you think about companies that have millions of consumers information on file and you take $500 statutory damages, which would be at the, the low end uh, of, of, or let's just take a thousand, right? So now we're talking about 10,000 customers. <laughs> I, should, I should have done this math before we got on the phone. Um, but I think we're talking in the range of about $10 million, which is a significant uh, amount of money for a technical violation that resulted in no actual harm. State statutes, same thing, California shine the light. Um, you know, there could be a technical violation of that where the company doesn't respond within 30 days uh, to the request for information, even if they hadn't shared the consumer's information within the last 12 months. So again, no harm, but we could be looking at, at huge class action uh, violations and, and statutory award damages. So I think this will add up rather quickly. Um, one thing that I see coming out of this from a from a data breach standpoint, you know, we're seeing a lot more legislation introduced. Some of the, at least the initial proposals have had these private rights of action and statutory damages. I think that's something that companies are really going to want to be on guard about because as we know, state legislatures move a lot more quickly than our US Congress. I think another thing to think about is, you know, if the Supreme Court and, and the Solicitor General has weighed in here, um, he's actually weighed in on uh, the side of the respondents, which would mean that uh, that the violation of the statute alone is enough to confer that that Article Three standing. So I could see a lot more lobbying at the federal level to make changes to existing statutes like the VPPA or ECPA. Um, to uh, change it to, to either remove the private right of action in its entirety and give either the FTC or state attorneys general uh, the enforcement authority. Uh, this is not unprecedented. We've seen this in recent statutes like the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act or can spam even. Or um, if they don't want to take the private right of action away altogether to at least put a cap on statutory damages. So maybe something that would cause some you know, a company to think about what it's doing, maybe a million dollars, but you wouldn't get into these hundreds of millions of dollars of potential damages. Um, you know, both of those, I think, are opportunities for, for Congress to rethink some of these statutes going forward. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. It's just a, a really interesting case to watch and a huge case to watch. It's kind of flying under the radar, at least a little bit initially in terms of the mainstream media, but it's just really interesting because, of course, you know, the idea of quantifiable harm is always at issue, whether it's a data breach or really any kind of privacy litigation. So it's going to be very interesting to see which way this case goes, and we'll have to keep an eye on it and keep an eye, of course, on your publication. Again, that was Kristen McMealy of Davis Trite Maine. You can find more of their insight on this case now, and I'm assuming going forward as well, at Privesec Blog. Thank you for joining me today, Kristen. Thanks, Colin.